Another good thing I wanted to quickly mention, which I also want to highlight, which I think is really important and really cool, even though I wasn't that encouraging about it when it first was announced, I feel like having been engrossed in the scene over the last 18 months way more than I was prior especially going to all these kind of really small offshoot um you know queer LGBTQ nights that are really fun even though I'm probably not the you know I'm definitely not the target market who they're kind of you know advertising these parties for being a heteronormative cisgendered male I still have great times going to these raves because they're legitimately some of the better parties that they have that we have here in London these smaller type of events that cater to a particular demographic of people like that I'm loving it I'm loving it, I'm loving it and I'm also starting to understand how important these places are in terms of creating or providing a quasi safe space which is you know an often you know debate your term does safe space actually exist what's the point of a utopia when you've got creatures and monsters living amongst us whatever whatever but regardless as i say previously in all times i think representation in dance music or electronic music is not really race it's all it's widespread it's basically the issue that i have mostly is that very rarely do the crowds reflect are reflective of the lineups it's always kind of just like top down talking to you. It's always like these same established old fogey types or the same people that they kept repeating and rinsing, you know, over five years. But it's not really reflective of the people that are actually in the crowd, the young, viral, um, you know, uh, positive energy that are people that are going to these kind of events isn't reflected. But one place that it is are these events that are kind of you would could describe, I'll describe as the alternative ones, the ones that are, you know, uh, targeting queer people, LGBTQ folks, trans folks folks non-binary folks women those are the ones i feel like do a real good job of reflecting the lineups with the crowd as in you know, one of the same it's an actual real community also i love that thing and one good example of it is this festival called risen it says here london festival risen reveals 80 plus artists for 2023 return to multiple venues in hackney week on april 1st the event continues its policy of booking women trans and non-binary acts which is pretty cool i think at first when i spoke about it I was also along the lines of like, you know, of course, if you came here and said there was an all male festival, it'd go absolutely bar me if you just put those people on there, right? You had flipping, you know, eats everything. Um, you had, uh, you know, all those kind of folks playing Jamie Jones and Martinez brothers and whatnot. And then I was thinking, actually, that's every week, every other week in some lineup somewhere in some club in Europe, those guys are playing on lineups. So it's just all dudes. So if there's somebody willing to put on a festival and put their money where their mouth is and have all been playing and showing it's a viable option that actually makes money or maybe breaks even and it has people going to it that's actually a good thing because this industry is flipping annoying right no one actually backs anything you know that they actually speak about they all want kind of you know diversity and whatnot but they don't actually implement it in their lineups or they give diversity lineups to like shitty days or shitty nights in a week that they don't really want to promote or push too much or it's just one token thing happened in like black history month or whatnot whatever else nonsense it may be but it's not nothing that they really put any energy with but if it's profitable, if it's, you know, virally successful, if it gets clicks and views on social media, if it makes money, all this stuff, they'll definitely jump on it. So I think this is a good template or good, like, you know, opportunity to prove the concept. So it's, a pre yeah, it's a good proof of concept, this event. But hey, we've got a festival we're putting together. It's specifically um, a festival where the lineup is going to consist of people that are women, trans and non-binary. Those are, those are our main target. And again, you know, I'm sure there's going to be some occasions where they might have to kind of be flexible, but for the most part, that's where you, all your energy is being put into finding the best of the best in those categories, in those, you know, in, you know, in those groups of people and, and basically providing with a platform to go and play to a captive audience. And, you know, hacking is very progressive and forward thinking and open in that way. So definitely it would work, I would imagine. So it continues. Um, here it says returning to multiple venues across Hackney Wick, which is a pretty decent idea, having them dotting around different places like the Color Factory and whatnot, and a few other places. Um, it says on April the first, the Day Festival continues with its policy of booking women trans and non-binary acts. There are slots for Emerald, Helena Star, Paramida, Lakuti, Michelle Manti, Ross Silk, Tama Sumo, Taylor Jar, Scarlett O'Malley, and Lena Wilkins. Oh, really, really eager to see her play. Um, some of the crews and collective taking part will be 
Henry Bloom, Femme Frash, House of Carter, The Color Factory, The Yard, Courtyard, um, Crate Brewing, all my friends are among the venues being used. So these are all venues that are legitimately within a five minute walk of each other. So it's a pretty sick event. I'm not going to lie. Risen is presented and programmed. They're marketed by the women team members of London Promoter to Percolate. And the event will also offer opportunities for non-males in areas of industry that have historically been male dominated, such as sound engineering, lighting and venue operations. The aim is to, for this entire festival to be non, to be staffed to be non-male which is pretty funny and a crazy way to go about things because you'd imagine these areas such as um what is it called sound engineering lighting and venue operations it's not very much a i wouldn't say it's a male dominated industry as opposed to it's more so of an industry that males tend to gravitate towards i don't think there's many sound engineers out there that are women or trans or non-binary just because they don't want to do it i would imagine but the good thing with these festivals and this platform is that you get a chance to either disprove that comment that I made or you get a chance to offer up a different solution, right? A different alternative or you get to, a chance to propose something different. And, you know, maybe just having the option out there will change things. Like similar, I think of it similar to those... um those skate parks they set up in parts of africa i think there's a particular account i follow on twitter i think it might be in ghana or cameroon i forgot which one it is maybe it's Ghana, maybe it's Cam maybe cameroon there's a particular um, foundation and they set up a skate park in those countries and you obviously you know you get you give access to these local kids who don't have much to skate and whatnot and suddenly these kids become flipping really good skateboarders and get really engrossed in skateboarding culture but if they hadn't built that skate park they maybe have never got into it so sometimes it is just a point of access, like I'd be having the ability to kind of access those things, have it readily available, and now suddenly you're in a mindset of getting it. And I know for me personally, you know, having been obsessed and in love with electronic music and dance music and nightclub culture for the longest time, the thing that got me involved or got me kind of, you know, on it was going to events all the time and seeing people that looked like myself, maybe playing behind the decks or maybe seeing people that I just loved and appreciated as artists, regardless of their gender or race and wanting to emulate and do that myself or see people put on events that I wanted to do myself. All those things kind of got my brain kind of racing. And then I went out and did my thing and whatnot. And of course, you know, I'm resourceful. I'm kind of um, self-sufficient. I don't really need any help or assistance that way. But there are some people out there that do need their hand held. They do need maybe an introduction. They do need a quote unquote safe space to ask questions, to inquire, whatever it may be, so that they can maybe get into an area that they maybe wouldn't have got into because it looked a bit intimidating. I, maybe it's a little bit similar kind of picture in my head to that scene in the gym. You know, when you're in the gym and there's like a girl coming to the area where you're at the free weights and you can clearly see she wants to use the weights, but she's a bit uncomfortable because it's all dudes and we're not saying anything, but I guess everyone's energy just vibes around. She just turns around and goes somewhere else. Whereas if there was maybe one person there could be like, hey, don't worry, come, what you want to do? And just kind of talking her through, suddenly she'd feel comfortable enough to kind of work out there. So sometimes that little arm around the shoulder can make all the difference. So this is the proverbial arm around the shoulder. So who knows? Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But I like that they're putting their money where their mouth is. Because for all the people out there talking about, oh, we want to do, um, you know, diversity in the lineups. There's not many black people in the lineups, all that sort of nonsense. Where's wh Where are they putting on festivals with all black lineups? Where is that happening? Right? Everyone's talking a big game about that. Why don't you put your money where your mouth is? You know, set up this event. It's not cheap. The, the stuff is not going to be free, regardless of how um, egalitarian and, you know, woo-woo your ideas are. No one's going to let you, you know, rent a venue for free or equipment. So they're paying this out of their own pocket and they're doing it. They're putting their money where their mouth is. So I'm all for it. I'm definitely rooting for them. And I would like to see people who, again, are on this whole, like, let's see more black and brown people behind the booth to do the same thing put on an event where you only have black and brown people playing on the lineup try that out let's see what happens isn't it? let's see if it works or not proof your concept and you never know if it becomes successful suddenly you've got fucking all these companies like adas and nike is wanting to fucking sponsor you and slap a fucking red bull logo on your flyer Do you know what i mean it changes so quickly like that but anyway we move it says here we feel so lucky to be organizing an event which will have an ethos or what's it which has an ethos so close to our hearts says co-founder kitty bartlin alice franklin i know kitty i worked with her a long time ago big up kitty it says last year's events was an incredibly sorry last year's events was an incredible day of love and unity across hacking wicks dance floors with an ecstatic energy year one was incredible and we've been overwhelmed with the interest in risen and how many people want to be part of year two sick continue to build the community attend these artists and behind the scenes and provide a to celebrate the divine feminine 
They added that it's always been super important for us when we first started conceptualizing this event. Risen is a joint effort from everyone involved. So thanks to all who have supported and been involved. Divine Feminine Energy is here to stay. And as you can see in the lineup here, loads of big artists. I think everyone here in bold is probably all the big names that they want people to kind of see and get excited about ticket-wise. You know, just to kind of note, the flyer is really nice. I like the flyer. I'm not going to lie. I like the logo. So the big names, obviously, I already mentioned. Althea, obviously, I'm a big fan of, that I know of. Lena Wilkins, I'm a big fan of Lakuti, Tamasoma, the usual Paramida, the ones that we all kind of vaguely know, but I'm sure there's others that people are going to be excited for and fill in. And, you know, as per usual, these type of events, the, the next group of people that want to be seen next year will be there again and they'll get inspired and it'll go on and on and on. So, rooting for them, hope it works out and hopefully this is an example to all that you should put your money where your mouth is and talk bloody less.